Okay, we're going to start our study today in 1 Chronicles 20. We're going to run there. And when we do today's chapter, we're going to break into three places. But 1 Chronicles chapter 20, verse 1. Interesting little study in this one. We'll come to 2 Samuel 12, but we need to look at 1 Chronicles 20, verse 1, the occupying verse that goes with it. And it came to pass that after the year was expired, at the time the kings go out to battle. No, that's not the one. Hold on. 21 verse 1. Excuse me. 1 Chronicles 21 1. And Satan stood up against Israel and provoked David to number Israel. The devil made me do it. There it is. Satan did it. It's his fault. Now, 2 Samuel 24. Verse 1. 2 Samuel 24, verse 1. Read that passage first for a reason. No, Satan made me do it. In 1 Chronicles 21, Satan made me do it. And again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel, and he, God, moved David against them. And you go number, wait a minute. We got a contradiction here. One place says Satan did it, and the other place says God did it. Huh? First Chronicles 21, 1 Chronicles 21.1 and then 2 Samuel 24.1. So we got two places here. We've got David being pressured to number Israel. But one place says Satan. One place said God. Satan make me do it or did God make me do it? That's a question. That's a good question. Now take our Bibles to Job chapter 1. And it'll play out Job chapter 1. Verse 6. Job 1 and 2 are the answers to that question. Was it God or is it Satan? What's that contradiction? There is no contradiction. You need to realize that Satan, though an enemy of God, can be a tool of God. In Job 1, 6. Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them. Alright, there's God and Satan. And the Lord said unto Satan, Imagine God speaking to Satan. When cometh thou? Then Satan answered the Lord. Imagine Satan answering God. And said, From going to and fro in the earth, and walking up and down in it. And the Lord said to Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job? <laughs> Boy, that's not an open door. That there is none like him in, in the earth. <laughs> God... <laughs> Keep it down. And perfect and upright. Perfect and upright. An upright man. This is God bragging on a, on one of his servants. One that feareth God me. <laughs> Look at God speaking the third person to Satan. And his skew is evil. That's the first time his skew shows up. Then Satan answered the Lord, that's Jehovah, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D, and said, does Job fear God for naught? <laughs> really? Really, God? <laughs> Hast thou not made an hedge, first time hedge shows up, about him and about his house and about all he has on every... God, you're protecting him, but we're not getting to the part where we want yet. When we get to Job, Lord willing... Thou hast blessed the work of his hand, and his substance is increased in thy land. But put forth thy hand, God's hand, now, and touch all that he has, and he will curse thee to thy face. God, you touched him. You removed that hedge. You put the vengeance on him. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he has is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thy hand. Satan, you go do it. But this is your limitation. 
So Satan went forth in the presence of the Lord. And there was a day when his sons and daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. Verse 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20 is the permission that God gave the devil. Go kill his animals. Go take his animals. Go destroy his sons. I removed that hedge. You have all you can do except don't kill Job. Now, Satan told God, put your hand, and God says, okay, go do it. Who did 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and read the verses for yourself. Lord willing, we'll get to this chapter. Satan did it. What gave Satan the opportunity to do that? God's permission. Chapter 2 of Job. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. Sound familiar? And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. Familiar. The Lord said unto Satan, From whence cometh thou? And Satan answered the Lord, and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. The Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in all the earth, in, in the earth, and a perfect and upright man, one that fears God and sheweth evil, and still he holdeth fast his integrity, though thou movest me against him. Satan caused David to number Israel. God caused David to number Israel. I remove my hand, go get Job. But don't you touch him. You see what you did to me? You see what you made me do to Job? And yet he's strong. Verse 4, and Satan answered the Lord and said, Skin for skin, yea, all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thy hand now, again, and touch his bone and his flesh, and I will cur and he will curse thee to thy face. And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thy hand, but save his life. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. From head to toe. God says, go do it. Satan said, okay, bye, out of here. You got it. We got to realize that Satan needs permission from God. Now, why did God do that? Well, first of all, Job was self-righteous. That is the sin of Job. When you go through the 42 chapters of Job, Job was getting a little high and mighty on himself. So God used Satan. And Satan can be a tool for God. Satan would be at great advantage for the Christian. For God to say, all right, yeah, go ahead. But don't do this. But don't do that. And the fact is, now when we go back to Samuel, we go back to 2 Samuel 24. And we see the clause of 2 Samuel 24 1. And again, the anger of the Lord. That's important. Because the anger of the Lord shows why God had this happen. It's because of sin. And it's not the sin of David. It's the sin of the people. And this is why God will have Satan. Use David. First Chronicles 21 said that the devil, Satan, caused David to number Israel. First, sec, I mean, excuse me, Second Samuel 24 says God's angry and he provoked David using Satan because of sin. And there is a point that Re, uh, Hebrews chapter 13 says that God is our father. He will chastise us. And sometimes we got to realize when you run the references of Proverbs, the rod, it corrected. If you spare the rod, you're going to have a child that's going to be, you know, just trouble. You're, you're to use that rod, and you're not to fear their crying. That rod is to be applied. That rod for God for us 
can be Satan with limitations, Job 1 and 2. Nation of Israel is sin. God's like, Satan's like, well, let me get him. Let me go after him. All right, you can go after him, but this is your limitation. And it's funny because when you read Psalms 23, thy rod and thy staff, they come from me. And that rod is Satan. Satan would love to beat the ones that are of God. So in 24, 1, again, the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. That's important. When we read later this chapter with David, Israel has sinned. And he moved David against them, Israel. So God's using David and the, the devil. David's innocent to a point. To say, go number Israel and Judah. Now there, I have found that there is no law that says you could number. Oh, Exodus 30 verse 11, you find where Moses is numbering. And he said, well, what is the major sin that David's doing the census? Is when you look at, okay, look at all the people we got, and you take your reliance off God. Look how many horses we got. And the Bible says the horse is a vain thing. And the thing is, if there was to be a military campaign, well, that's, who are we going to put our reliance on? Our extreme military strength? Or are we going to put it on God first? And even Jesus himself in the, in the gospel said, is there not a king that will sit down and say, do I need this many men to go fight this king that has this many men? Or should I send a peace treaty? And when it comes down to this numbering, this poll, the census is, Israel is going to say, look how strong we are. That comes down to pride. That's what it breaks it down to. And God's going to break that pride. For the king said to Joab, the captain of the host, Joab's back in that authority again. He's killed everybody else. Except for his brother. King said to Joab, the captain of the host, so there's the military leader of all the military, which was un, which was with him. Go now through all the tribes of Israel. All the tribes. There are 12 of them. Joab. From Dan, that's far north, to Beersheba, that's far south. That's north to south. From east to west is the Mediterranean Sea to the Jordan River. And there are some tribes on the wrong side. That I may know the number of the people. I want a census. Joab said to the king. Now the Lord thy God add unto the people. How many soever they be. A hundredfold. And that the eyes of my Lord the king may see it. But why does my Lord the king delight in this thing? David. God has given us a lot of people. You can see it. We don't need to number them. Let's rely on God. What you're doing, what you're saying, David, is really stupid. It's a stupid order. <laughs> this is a guy who's murdered people. He's, he's telling the king. <laughs> you see how merciful David is as king as a type of Jesus Christ? You walk up to him. I think that's really stupid. <laughs> you try that with the other king. You try that with the heathen kings, and your mouth would be across the floor with your body over here. That's why I think, I think, I think, you know, I'll have to take this. I believe the great white throne judgment says there's no more time. I think Jesus is going to let everyone speak their feet. Does not a judge have an orderly rulership in his courtroom to let the guy, hey, you got something to say? All right, go ahead and say it. Some may do it, some may not do it. But he allows Joab, and he doesn't cut Joab off. Verse 4. Notwithstanding, the king's word prevailed against Joab. Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4. 
Solomon writes to us, Ecclesiastes chapter 8, verse 4. This is not a wonderful and exciting 8 4 of the King James 1611, King James 1611 Bible. Ecclesiastes 8 4, where the word of a king is, there is power. And who may say unto him, What doest thou? Uh, Joab. But Joab ain't going to get far. <laughs> Joab's like, this is stupid. Why do you want me to do this? And Joab's going to end up going out the door doing what the king told him to do. That's why they don't want a King James Bible. One of the many reasons. Why? Because the king has authority. We're not a king. We have presidents. Who are wimps. And will give in to the media. And we'll give in to the population of people. And we'll give in to their political party. A king said, this is the law. If you don't like it, I can destroy your entire life and your family. A president can't do that. People hide behind the Constitution. So notwithstanding, the king's word prevailed against Joab. And against the captains of the host. Those are the military leaders under Joab. So it looks like even Joab's military leaders, David, this is stupid. Really. What do you want us to do? And Joab and the captain's host went out from the presence of the king to number the people of Israel. And they passed over Jordan. That's the Jordan River. They're heading east. And pitched in Aurora on the right side of the city that lies in the midst of the river of Gad and toward Jazer. This is on the east, other side of the Jordan River, east. Then they came to Gil Gilead. They're heading north. And to the land of Tathim Hashtabai. Hash and they came to Dan Jian. Dan Jan about Zidon. That's the Mediterranean Sea. Joab is doing this whole, not wholeheartedly. They're like, all right, let's stop here and count the people. And we, we, we can get something to eat and go to sleep. Let's go walking. All right, we're going to stop. Let's count these people. Man, he's not stopping in every city. You realize what list we would have the cities that they would stop in? When David said the 12 tribes, all the tribes, Joab is a person that they've been ordered to do something. Well, I'm going to do it, but I'm not doing it to the fullest. He's disobeying the king. Verse 7, and came to the stronghold of Tyre. That's, again, that's on the Mediterranean Sea. They're moving south. Going from Zidon to Tyre, that's going south. To all the cities of the Hivites. That's not where the Jews are. <laughs> not where they're supposed to be. They're not even supposed to be there. And the Canaanites. And they went out to the south of Judah. Even to Beersheba. Alright, so now they're... If you look at a map where Tyre is and Beersheba, that's a lot of land. There's a lot of cities. Hey, just keep walking. We're being paid for it. <laughs> So when they had gone through all the land, they came to Jerusalem. They went through all the land. They just didn't do it fully. At the end of nine months and 20 days, that's all it took. Twelve tribes, when you look at the map. And Joab gave up the sum of the number of the people unto the king. And there were in Israel 800,000 people. Valiant men. He didn't count them all, did he? He only counted the military men that were strong. David said, the, the king said to Joab, the captain host, which was with him, go now through all the tribes of Israel, from Dan to, even to Beersheba, and number ye the people. Joab comes back with this valiant man. <laughs> and the valiant men that drew sword drew the sword, military, army, and the men of Judah were 500,000 men. Now we're going to stop there. 
We're going to break this chapter, Lord willing, to three. But you need to pay attention to this chapter because when we close out this chapter, what's going to happen is we're going to see the earth's greatest title deed that the United Nations, the Middle East, will not hold to be true today. And I'm going to look up. I'm going to look up this reference, hopefully, Lord willing, in a modern Bible. Because what we're reading about right now, that when God is angry with Israel, He uses Satan. He says, "David, go number them," and you're going to get the greatest, the absolute best, if I can ever say, what is the most greatest and the most bestest. Glorious occasion news is by the end of this chapter, Lord willing. We're going to see the title deed, not only to Jerusalem, but we're going to see the title deed and we're going to see the plot of land that will hold the most holy place of all where Solomon will build the temple. And every King James Bible has the title deed written in black and white. It's online. And we'll, we'll come to study. This needs to be broken in three parts. 